mean, as doesn't matter, I think, how often you preach or not, it is always um, a sacred uh, call from God to do this. As we consider um, what he has called us to do, I am grateful for the leadership. I have to say, um, I know Elder Wayne is very humble. He doesn't like me to talk about him, but I have to thank him. Because he, I was nervous out there in the room in the back, and he just came and gathered us and had this peace of that connection with God. He said, let's get together. And he was not talking about what is in the bulletin, who's next, but he just had a thought he had preparing events from scriptures and just really put my my heart at peace and yeah. read the scriptures just gave us peace and we pray together so i'm grateful for his leadership Amen. um and i'm grateful for each of the participants for, I'm, I'm glad to see diana playing and i'm glad to see when serge is also covering for her and um just Grateful to see each one of you here for the children's story and people who collect the offering, for the music, Carmen. Thank you for everything and for being willing to serve God in His house of prayer this morning. Amen. As we um, start our um, sermon today, I must uh, have a disclaimer and tell you that I am not coming to you from a high pulpit to tell you what a mother's supposed to do. <laughs> this sermon, um, anytime I have preached, I haven't done it a lot, but I have. And when I do, I realize that if the sermon does not preach to myself first, to myself first, it will not touch the lives of others. So understand that anything that comes from this mouth out to you it has passed first through my heart and, and, and really um, ministered to me first and corrected me first and, and gave me a lot to think about. So with that in mind, I want to tell you that um, the sermon today, Choosing the Better Part, um, it's a tender call from the Lord, not just to women, in this special day, we're going to focus on mothers and women because we struggle a lot with this. Not to say that there are no men that go through that, so this message will go to everybody. If you came to the house of God to search for an answer to your needs, you will find that if you connect with the Lord and find what is the lesson that God wants you to learn and what is that answer that will bring you home with peace in your heart knowing that you have been in his presence this morning. So, um, while we um, bow our heads and have a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, we come as empty vessels, maybe unclean vessels, asking you for cleaning our souls with the blood of your Son, to make us worthy and to fill us with your spirit, to be used by you, to be re-energized and reconnected with you. We are grateful, Father, for this son, your son, Jesus Christ, that is the greatest gift you could have given us. And we're grateful for the many different ways you tried to give us pictures of your love through many different um, things on earth, creation and things that you've done for us. So as we search in your word today, we pray that your scriptures might be clear to us in our minds, that the message that each one of us need to receive this morning may be clear, and that we may come out of this house of prayer change, and with that peace that overpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Anybody has an idea what that little... Um, that little phrase, choosing the better part, comes from. Anybody? Choosing the better part. Martha Any and ideas? Mary. Martha and Mary. Martha and Mary, yes. But to go to um, that, before going to that, um, as the, that part of our sermon, I want you to take you back to when God decided that 
um, his creation was not complete yet. So let's open Genesis in Genesis 1 27. Everybody get your Bibles. To Genesis 1 27. Because we're going to talk about men and women, but especially women. Genesis 1 27. Who would like to read that for me? Since I'm going to be talking a lot here, I need somebody. Else. Go ahead, Diane. Thank you. So God created man. So God created male and female in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Both of them completed the image of God. As you can see and go through um, the creation week, and you realize that um, Adam was created first, and he goes through and sees all the animals, and God brings all the animals to him, he starts naming them. And you know the story, he just keep looking, these happy giraffes and, and elephants, all with their couples, and he's like, I don't have anyone looking like me. <laughs> what is going on? Um, but interestingly enough, God doesn't tell him, hey, you're missing a woman. He just brings him feel that need and that's important to us because it's important to recognize that even though our situations may be all different as I see in our church we have some that are singles and that are married some that are divorced some that are widows widows whatever the situation is uh, but he made us we him in mind to have this complete picture of having men and women so in in his, in his mind, as God, he wanted to give us a picture of, in, in a small scale, of the grace of God, of the love of God, of who he is. And so we complete each other. With the differences that we have, we all complete each other, men and women. So in that sense, we realize that when God brought Adam, um, Eve to Adam, and brought her to him, of course, who better than God himself to match you with somebody, right? Amen. And so that was a perfect match. And they fell in love with each other. God's image in humanity was not complete until both male and female were created. God made them different but complementary with complementary characteristics in such a way that the human couple will in a small scale reflect who he is. Finally, because right before that, he said, it is not man that, there's no good that man will be alone, right before that. But after that, he says they, that indeed everything was very good. So he finishes creation. Today we recognize that gift that God gave to Adam. And we're gonna talk about mothers, and we're gonna talk about women. But most of all, we're talking about the way God created us and make us special, not from the worldly feminist point of view where women are superior and men are ridiculed, which is not what God wanted us to be. That is something that came after because of sin. But from the biblical point of view, where we appreciate the differences and embrace them as far as the way that God intended us to be. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to realize. In this world, the pictures that we have of women and men are so distorted, but it's not the way God had wanted at the beginning to be. So we need to learn to appreciate and never put each other down. Because the characteristics that God has given to each one of us complete and reflect the image of God. Today's sermon is entitled, a ten, really the full title is A Tender Invitation to Choose the Better Part. And that is because as women, some of the characteristics that God has given us is the protectors, the lovers uh, of, of our children and, and, and take care of our home. But sometimes that gets us in a little bit of trouble because we deal with a lot of anxiety. We worry a lot. And we are 
giving this picture now, especially with, with um, uh, the internet, it's so easy to go, go on Pinterest and different places, and there's this perfect picture of what your house should look. And when the reality of women look around, when you have two, three children, and look around and say, I am failing. Look at my house. But that is not true. Nobody lives like that. I have said that before, that when I have taken, okay, today, my floor is going to be shining. Look at this. And I take it up, guys, get out of here. We ate already. I'm going to shine my floor. And then I said, I wish that they would just go live somewhere else. Don't step on it. No man, don't touch that. You know, because it just is a lot of work. You wish it would stay like that, but it doesn't. And that is the truth. So we cannot go by the images that the world sells. So when we have that clear in our minds, we realize that God made us the way we are for a reason. But sometimes that goes the wrong way. There's a book that a friend of mine um, gave to me. Her name was uh, Lynn Ortel, and uh, I don't know if any of you know her. Um, she was the, the uh, wife of the president of the Northern New England Conference, and a good friend of mine and a good mentor. And in one of the pastor's wife's retreats, she gave us this book, because she was not worried about us learning to preach better, but she was worried about um, she was concerned of her, her love was to minister to the heart of women. And so she gave me this book as a gift. I recommend to any of you to read this book. Uh, Having a Merry Heart in a Martha World. The title says it all, doesn't it? If you know the story of Mary and Martha. Now, get this part. This book does not talk about how bad Martha, bad Martha was and how good Mary was. No, no, no. It just talks about the differences and when is the time to be Martha and when is the time to be Mary. Mm. Now, women are made for relationships and it just comes easy to us. We can put out, if we, this is what I learned from my friend because she was certainly a Proverbs 31 woman. I looked up to her, I learned so much from her. And this is what I learned from her. Women are made for relationships. It just comes easy to us. But only and only when we put aside our pride and keep a teachable spirit, we can definitely enrich our lives in such amazing ways as we drink from the fountain of godly friendships, as we enjoy learning from our older friends and their failures and victories that come with many years of experience. When we're willing to open to share from our heart, we can minister to those who might need encouragement as they go through similar challenges in their lives. <coughs> when I look around in this church, we have a, a, a really diverse church. Not just where we come from, as you know, different countries and cultures, but also the situations we're living in. I see young girls, looking up to older ladies or younger ladies to follow in their steps. I see grandmothers with years and years of experience. I see young mothers eager to learn how to do the best that they can. I see single mothers. I see wives, young wives. I see grandmothers taking care of their grandchildren. I see younger women just married learning trying to learn to be the best wife that they can but it is difficult to grow as a christian if we are not inclusive in our church and if we don't open our hearts to share to mentor i am grateful for the few people that i remember that took me aside and i just look up to them and i grew learning from them not just from the good things, but also from their mistakes. Of course, that makes us vulnerable to open our hearts, right? So here's the key. There's something that we said in our family, and it is true in this family. It takes courage to open your heart because it makes you vulnerable, right? 
the ones that can hurt you the most are the ones that are closest to you. Amen. But that should not happen in this house, in this family. So we need to treat each other with tenderness, with love and care. Amen. And I'm coming here to a topic that is, is very um, touchy to me for me, and, and it's, it's, it's very important. I've gone through different stages of my life, and I've always looked up to this, this Proverbs 31 uh, woman uh, picture. So if you would like to open in Proverbs 31, uh, you will see this beautiful picture that God puts as the, the We'll say the picture, an example of what God would like us to be as women, right? You don't have to be married to have this picture, but in this case, this is the case of the woman in Proverbs 31. And, and, and we're going to, to talk a little bit about each situation. All of us are in different um, situations and stages in our lives. But Proverbs 31, they call it the virtuous wife, is the little subtitle I have in my Bible. I'm not going to read it all, but I'm going to read some parts of it. So if you start in verse 10 and just kind of follow through, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But this is what it says. And this is what we actually measure ourselves as, as Christians. Okay? So, uh, the virtuous wife. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. And then talks about the work of her hands. She works really hard at home. And she also, in verse 13 says, she also rises while it is yet at night and provides food for her household and portions for her maid servants. And when I start looking at that, I say, sometimes I don't feel like waking up in the middle of the night to do that, right? That's the reality, we're very tired, but this is the picture of perfection, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 16, she considers a field and buys it from her prophets, she plants a vineyard. So she takes care of her house, right, and, and, and manages and ministers her house. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her land does not go out by night. You keep going to verse 20, says she extends her hand to the poor, Yes, she reaches out her hand to the needy. So she is like Dorcas, right? She's just always working for those who need her around her. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for her for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. So she pretty much sews and cooks and she's like a super woman, right? She does all, all of that. And you can look up to that, and you can also just feel kind of like, I am not that. <laughs> no way I can do that. Look at verse 25. It is my favorite part. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, on, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. That part reminds me of all of those who have a lot of years of experience. We need you, so I don't think that each one of us can take the whole thing, but I think that as a family, we can help each other to get to this picture, right? Would you agree? Amen. And so we need the wisdom of those who have gone before us. We need those who are just starting to put our differences aside, and that pride that sometimes comes with youthful, uh, with, with the youth, and say, you know what? I don't know as much as I thought I knew. Can you teach me? Can you guide me? Can you help me? These are my struggles. But then with kindness, she says, she, says she, she speaks with kindness. So those of you who have gone before, or those of us who have more experience, have to treat us with kindness. Not with a wagging finger. And then verse 30 says, Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen. 
So it's a beautiful picture. Now, it seems impossible to measure up to this amazing woman, but we as, as, as friends, as sisters in Christ, need to remind each other that we all struggle. And it's okay to struggle, but we're here to help each other. Now, um, the struggle is real, isn't it? Let's imagine the uh, time in, in Proverbs 31, woman where everything had to be carried, you had to go to the well and carry the water. To remember Rebecca had to carry all those things for the camels. Was it Rebecca? Yes. For the camels and all that, right? So it was hard work at the time. But is it hard work these days too? Yes. It is, yeah. And the mother comes and say, oh, life for women are going to be a lot easier. Now you have vacuum cleaners and you have this and that. No, it's just got a lot easier. That's all. <laughs> it's just it's still hard. So that was Proverbs 31. But now when I sometimes stop to listen to myself and when I go home and all the things I have to do, imagine all that. Now you don't have to have kids for that, but of course kids make it a lot harder, right? <laughs> so, but if you're just a, a, a wife, it's, it's hard. And if you work outside of the, the house and then go mm. and you still have to do mm. the house, hopefully your husband helps you mm. and, and, and works together with you, mm. right? Because it's not like I get to work, woman, where's my food? No, no, no. <laughs> That's not the way they got meant. But I want you guys, if you don't have a clear picture of what a mom does, I found somebody who actually figured out how to put together everything that a mom will say in 24 hours in 2 minutes and 55 seconds. Can you imagine that? So, get ready to listen to this. I don't know if you have already, Charles, there it is. Pay attention and listen to them. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> so we'll keep going back. What I have done is I have uh, figured out what a mom would say in a 24-hour period, and I have condensed it to 2 minutes and 55 seconds. So strap on your seat now. Here we go.
moms have to do and so much more. And so I, sometimes I know we, we struggle with this, we don't feel appreciated, but the Lord has given us um, these this special characteristics of being resilient and to keep going on and on and on like the energized body and just keep going on and on until we need even even older women it's amazing i see them i see my mom and i just uh, i see her i say i wish I, you know if i get to be just a little bit like she is i'll be so happy <laughs> uh yeah our lives are crazy we are doctors and 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 physicians and nurses and teachers and maids and administrators and everything and we're in call 24 7. so i have been blessed to have a mother that was an example to me and i i cannot imagine how she did it um my father got out of the picture out of marriage when i was three years old and she did it all by herself and now that i have kids i say how in the world did she do it all I, I'm just grateful for her, and I, um, I know she's gonna be watching this. So happy Mother's Day, Mom! Even though you're far away, <laughs> I love you, and I'm, I'm so proud of you. And I know I'm trying to do the best I can, but you cannot do it by yourself. You just really have to rely on the Lord to, to, to do it because the, the li life throws so many challenges at you every day, especially with kids. You never know. You think you know everything, and you don't. You just don't know anything. <laughs> every day is a new challenge, right? But it helps us to grow. Um, today I want to also talk to you a little bit about those those hard moments in my life that I went through before. You see, all of us go through being single, and then you're looking for the right guy and hoping that the Lord will bring that person, and then we get married, and then the church start looking at you, saying, so, so. When are you bringing some? No kids? And I tell you this, this is a very sensitive issue. And I'm going to open a big parenthesis here in my sermon, and I'm going to talk to you from my heart. So listen, dear friends. I know we all have good intentions often to be a little bit pushy sometimes but we need to learn to be sensitive because you don't know what you don't know okay and i'm telling you this from my heart because i went through that being a pastor's wife i had to be i was expecting to be there every sabbath every baby shower every Mother's Day, directing everything and directing the kids. Eight years, and we couldn't have children yet. It's not that we didn't want to. She just couldn't. God knows what. The doctors never found out what the problem was. But here's the thing. I did have a lot of doctors in the church that would come and tell me all the things. Good intention. Good intention. But he slipped. And I know, and I know the pain many of us go through. And you have to smile. Well, you know, the Lord will say, and inside we're crying. Because every time somebody asks, it just cuts deeper. It is hard. So, friends, don't push, don't talk, don't talk with others about, I wonder what they're not having kids yet. Look, pray for them, okay? But don't ask them, don't, don't go to a baby shower and say, hey, when's your turn? Oh, you don't know how deep that cuts and how hard it is to be here on Mother's Day. I hated it to be in church on Mother's Day when I was going through that because it looked like everybody was getting pregnant around me and everybody had a baby and I was crying inside. And it was harder when people would ask me, 
Why are you having kids? Haven't you gone to the doctor? You know, maybe you need to relax. Maybe this is. You know, you guys, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay? So, if there's one thing you can take with you, is be sensitive. Amen. Okay? Don't just say whatever comes through your head out of your mouth. Let it go through that filter. Okay? Now, there are women here that may be going through that right now. There may be women right now that they may be going through the struggle of, of not knowing what's gonna happen if God may want them to adopt children like it happened to Charles and I, we were blessed. But we, were, we went through a lot, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not that because you're a woman and you're married, that's your job and when are you gonna get pregnant? Please, guys. So I, I felt the call to talk about that this moment, okay? because it's not talk much about that. So, let's put that aside. How about those who decided not to have kids? They could get pregnant, but they don't want to get kids. Maybe the Lord called them to do that. Maybe I, I was friends with many teachers, friends of mine because I was a teacher too, that say, you know, I feel that my ministry is the kids. I, these are my kids, my children. And, and I love them and, and I think, I don't wanna have kids on my own because my hands are full, this is my ministry. That's okay too, read Paul. He's okay with it, okay? So don't want your finger on people. And it may sound harsh to you, but you may think, oh my goodness, why is she being so harsh? I tell you, it is necessary, I think, because we don't think about it. And I went through it. And these women need to be having a voice, and I'm here to be their voice, to tell you, don't get into business, pray for them. Amen. But don't, don't make them feel embarrassed, uh, ashamed because they can't have children, okay? Or because they have decided not to. Just pray for them, be the friends. So be careful, be sensitive, realize that the Lord uh, may have a different plan than the one you think they should have. Now, on the other hand, as women, we beat ourselves a lot. We think that we're not good enough. Is my cooking good enough? Is my husband gonna like it? Is my house clean enough? Are my children good, well behaved enough? Am I dressing well enough? Am I young enough? Am I looking good enough? Am I not good enough? <laughs> this is what the world sells us. But I'm coming here to tell you that the Lord has a plan for each one of us. And he made you the way you are. Yes, we're all sinful, but he made us with the special characteristics that is you, with your the way you are. So come to him in peace and just like Mary and Martha. And this is where we are getting into this. Martha, you know the story if you know what what she was doing before. And and Martha, Mary, I'm sorry, Mary. Uh, you know, and if you read a little bit about at Jesus' feet, uh, Mary, she, she had her, her past life before Jesus, let's say so. And, and she came to Jesus' feet every time she could because she knew the desperate need she had of God. So if we go to Luke 10, 38, which was um, <clears throat> part of the, the, oh no, that was not scripture, but let's, let's look at it in Luke 10, 38. This is what happened between um, Mary and Martha and Jesus. And who would like to read Luke 10, verses 38 through 42? Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. Now it came to pass as they went entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into our house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had led me to serve alone? It are therefore that she helped me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, Thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, 
which shall not be taken away from her. <coughs> so, do you see uh, Mary and Martha were very different, right? Kind of, so. Okay, but was Jesus wagging his finger at Martha? No, no, we need both sides. Remember, this is, this is the thing. There's a time for us to see that Jesus speaks. There's a time also for us to, you know, or they can assist them, Martha. They're always serving. Don't we need them? Who's going to serve the food if we don't have deaconess? Imagine the chaos. You know? uh, so we need both, but there's a place and time for everything. So talking to you moms and anybody really if you struggle with this, but for, for women, um, we struggle with it. You know, it's like, oh, what should I do? Oh, I need to do this. and But also, I, I, I don't have enough time for God in the morning, especially moms. Oh, man, I, now I know it's, it's, you know, and my kids are, are, are older. I can imagine when they're really, really little. But you wake up with a, when they're babies, you know, they're crying. And you're like, oh, and your day started. You don't have enough time now for worship. It's not that you, you, you didn't make your plan, but life happens like that when you're a mom. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and your day started like, man, I was planning to have my worship, and now you are downstairs, and then, oh, the floor, oh, this thing, my cats, oh, then, terrible on the floor, let me clean, clean this, and then, oh, food, you need food, and this and that, and when I realize I'm still in pajamas, and the day has already started, and it's already noisy, and the neighbors and the trash passing by, picking up, it's just, life is started. Mm -hmm. And, oh, my worship. Mm -hmm. Yes, can you stay here? This is what I did, you know. Have you breakfast and you run upstairs? If, if the day started like that, I'm gonna run upstairs and just have five minutes in my closet. <laughs> just like, dear Lord, give me strength, give me some words I need for today, and the day start. Yeah. Not every day is like that, but you never know. So with that, Jesus comes to Martha that got this unexpected visit, right? And she started getting everything ready, change the towels, change this, clean that, and make everything shine, because that's Martha, right? She wants everything nice. And Mary sat at Jesus' feet. Now, any of you have had unexpected visitors? And so you start cooking right away and doing? And it, ha it happened to me once, good friends of mine passed by and came, and um, I right away came to serve and start cooking, and they were just passing by. And so they came, ate, and the moment I had everything done and cleaning, I came to talk to them, and it was time for them to leave. Oh. And I said, it was nice time you here. <laughs> Does that happen to us sometimes? Let me tell you how. Maybe you had these unexpected moments in life. You plan your day. Any of you like to make lists for the day? Planning what to do. Oh, today I'm gonna do this and this and this and go shopping and da 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 da. I'm gonna call it da 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 da. And I have my day all ready. But I tell you what, if you don't put it at Jesus' feet, your day is going to be a mess. Now, you may accomplish everything that you said in your list, but you will not be at peace with God because it was not the plan that God had for you. And so, we need to learn to put our plans at Jesus' feet, to have that peace and not that anxiety that Mary, the Martha was corrected for. You see, Martha was not corrected for serving, she was corrected because she was worried about many things. She was anxious about things. She just wanted everything perfect. Mm. So she needed to put that aside and see that Jesus' feet and leave that anxiety on the side. With that, our daily visitors could be not necessarily a good friend that came by. But let me tell you what my day sometimes brings me unexpected visitors. As a mom who works at home, I realize these guests come often in a form of unexpected teaching opportunities from God, such as a beautiful sunrise or sunset. And God says, stop. Look at what I made for you this way. I know you have your plan and I know you have your timer. Wait, I have my plan for you today. Stop, look at the window. Look at those gorgeous colors I made for you today. 
And it's a teaching opportunity for me and for my girls. Well, my girl, isn't it great what God made? Look at that. He didn't need to make those sunset colors, but he made it because he loves us. Wouldn't that relax you a little bit? Or maybe a rainy day. Oh, grass needed that rain so badly. Thank you, Jesus. Stop for a second. Maybe the siblings are fighting, and you can say, stop fighting. Or you can say, you know, girls, let me talk to you about what Jesus did in situations like that. Just sit down, let's pray for each other. Stop. In those times, I have two choices. I can be angry about the things I'm not getting done because I was supposed to do this and this and this. Or I can turn my plans to God, like Mary did, and just see that he said, did you want me to learn today? Obviously, it is not as practical because if you, in every situation, because if you are at work, if you are another, but learn to listen to those, that still small voice and take 10 seconds. Thank you, Jesus, for whatever. Let's pick up the rest and keep going with your day. But learn to stop and not be antsy about it. Moms, we, uh, you know, you know how it is. We worry about it and then we look, oh, man, it's so late and the dishes are out there still. Put your big rocks first. So, if it's possible, in the morning, take your time. It doesn't have to be anymore for some people don't work because we already have babies or whatever, maybe you find a different time. But have that big jar with the big rocks first. What would be your first big rock? Time with God. Re-energize, connect, plug in. Like you plug in your phone in the morning or the whole night so you have enough energy for the day, right? You need that. So plug in to the power. That way you have the right glasses to see what God wants you to see. So instead of passing by somebody me and your kids in the van and back looking at you, you stop by to help somebody in need. Stop by, right, so can you see, to pick up a little turtle that was about to get mashed in the, high, in the street and just said stop and put the blinkers and just make sure that's safe and pass the little turtle and show grace and mercy in actions, not just words. You keep seeing what you do. They don't care much what you say. Sad to say. They see what you do. And that's what they learn. So show mercy, show stop, follow God's plans for you. And then once you put those big rocks in places, then Realize that you are in control of your actions and your reactions to it. You can let past those teachable moments, or you just can go through the day without paying any attention to when God puts those stop signs in your path. That will give you that peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Through the day, through the midst of the storms, through the middle of whatever thing that you don't know that the day brings to you. So I come to you today, to all of you, but women, because coming from a heart of a woman and a woman, you are enough for God. He loved you so much that he came to give his life for you. Don't let Satan tell you you are not enough. When you look around the house and see those dishes, hopefully your husband sees that face of anxiety sometimes and say, honey, what about I'll take care of it. Thank you for doing all these other things. I've told my husband many times, so he said, I look around and it looks like I did nothing today. <laughs> Man, I still have this and this and look at that and I was fine and doing this. And he tells me often, but sometimes I have to tell myself, well, you know what? I put all my plans in God's hands. It doesn't happen every day. No, I, I make a lot of mistakes. I go and see sometimes today. But I look at my kids. 
And I said, you know, I could have washed those dishes, but I bet they won't remember that the dishes were dirty. But they will remember I took the time to sit down by their bedside and read the story to them. Mm-hmm. And share the love of God with them. And I bet my husband will love that I stop cleaning when he comes and give him a big hug and say, how was your day, honey? And for him to stop thinking about his job mm-hmm. and say, that looks so lovely, sweetie. Did you do that today? Doesn't that make your day when somebody pay attention to those details you kill yourself to do? <laughs> and those days that they just pass by and you're like, no. Oh, I spent three hours and <laughs> they just passed by. Sure. <laughs> and, but we don't do it because we want that back, you know, those places back. But we do because we love them. So let's show love to our moms, let's show love to our women, let's show love to our, our every, every woman who's here, teachers and anybody, single, married, whatever it is. Because God has brought us to make this picture complete, this image of God, but we need to lift each other up and love each other. I hope that today you stop to smell the roses. You stop and decide to plan for today and for tomorrow to go quietly to that garden, to walk along with the Lord, to have him recharge your energies and tell you, my child, you are enough for me. It's okay. Rest in me. I'll give you the energy for today. You are enough. I love you. Because I have sculpted your name in the palms of my hands. Women, you are enough. It's okay. The Lord will complete whatever you didn't do. He loves you the way you are. So, with that in mind, I would like to ask you to sing with me. I come to the garden hour. Let's go to that garden where he calls you to have a special time with him to show you his love for us.